let's start with assigning the buttons to the stick. Okay, first we go to options, key bindings, advanced controls customization. And then we set it over here to draw a stick hold as. If you have multiple sticks, you have to select the right stick that you want to use. Also, it's important to notice that whenever you switch those tabs over here, it's going to reset to keyboard and mouse. So every time you switch one, make sure to remember to switch back to joystick if you start assigning stuff. Start from the top. Light cockpit. Now, as you notice, um, this entire thing is empty. Um, I'm keeping this empty because all of these actions you see here are things you would do in the cockpit once or twice in the flight. And you would probably reach somewhere in the cockpit on a button to do it, or you reach on the keyboard for a hotkey. Those are things you wouldn't actually map on the stick because even if you have a really expensive stick, eventually you're going to run out of buttons. If you're new to flight sims using joysticks, uh, they all might seem loaded with many buttons, but eventually you're going to run out of them. So you want to keep them for the most important things you need on the stick. And one of these actions over here is required to be on the stick, uh, at least in my opinion. Also, the thing about realism, like for example, if you would have to switch on the flight systems, you would actually reach, if you were in the cockpit in real life, you would reach somewhere on the on an MFD or on the cockpit to press a button. And having those buttons uh, as a hotkey on the keyboard actually simulates that. And I think that's realistic and it feels nice like that. Also, don't be alarmed that it's completely empty. Remember, we are mapping the joysticks. If you switch over to mouse, the key bindings are still there. Okay, let's go back to Again, cockpit, I got nothing set up. <clears throat> okay, view. Again, nothing, almost nothing set up in here. The only thing I got set up is dynamic zoom toggle on button six. Button six is one of the buttons that are right next to your thumb when you're holding the throttle lever. I like to have it um, one of those buttons because that's an action I use quite often in flight to, on a landing zone, for example, to zoom in to find a nice place to land if you're looking at it from orbit or any other action where you want to see something up close like on a player's ship or something. However, well, I don't want that type of button to be directly on the main stick near the fire control because I don't use it that often. And I don't want to accidentally use that instead of fire control buttons. So I keep it separate on the throttle. It's, it's there on the stick, but it's slightly out of the way at the same time. <clears throat> so this one now we have flight movement now it gets really interesting if you're new to flight sims or space sims then those terms don't make much sense let me explain to you um, pitch is rotating your ship so your nose starts pointing up or pointing down it's your pitch got that mapped on the y axis that's on your stick the up down axis and if you want to map it yourself you basically double click it I'm not going to do that right now because so I don't mess up my curves. You double click it and then you move your, the stick axis up and down and it should assign it. Okay, so pitch is y axis. Then we got yaw, z axis rotation. Now, what yaw, um, yaw is <clears throat> the way your ship rotates left or right, which means if you're viewing it from the cockpit, you start rotating and but rotating so your nose moves left to right perceived from your perspective. That's a function you use quite often in flight, but you use it relatively um, low amounts of time compared to other axis functions. So we keep that on an axis that's not much used in actual flight, uh, rather on the stick. And on the Thrustmaster Hotus X, I mapped it to the, uh, to the twist axis of the main stick. So basically, if you hold the joystick and you twist it, that's the axis you're going to use. Again, yaw is something you use really rarely in actual flight in the game. But more about that later. Okay, the next thing would be roll. That's your x-axis. That's if you take your main stick and you push it left or right. That's your roll axis. That's your plane rotating along the 
longitudinal axis, the front back axis of, of its fuselage. That's something you use extremely often because when you maneuver the plane, you basically roll into a turn and then you use pitch to roll the plane. Another important one is space break. That's on button 10. Button 10 is on your thruster lever. And if you hold your hand on it, where your index finger is automatically resting almost, there's two buttons, a hard one and the soft one, the low one, the soft one, that's button 10. And that's an extremely critical thing in flight to have easy reach the space break, especially if you come barreling down at almost Mach 3 towards the planetary surface and you misjudged um, the speed that you, can, that you need. So you're going to press it quite often and hold it to slow your ship down. So that thing needs to be an extremely easy reach, like your, f your index finger should almost be resting on it all the time. That's why I'm using the button number 10. Yeah. Next one I got mapped is acceleration limiter increase, acceleration limiter decrease. Um, acceleration limiter increase is um, the amount of power you give the thrusters when you use them. If you rotate it down to lower levels, you basically get less thrust out of your thrusters when you, when you push them. And I, I mapped this on up and down on the hat one, you see it says hat one over here. And that's your coolie hat. The coolie hat on your main stick, if you rest your thumb on the main stick on the front, you got basically a red and black strap button. And you got one thing on the left that looks like a circular thing. You can push it left, right, up, down, diagonally also. It has, it's basically an eight button switch. It's not an axis, even though it feels like it. It's actually a button that you press in a direction then you let go and it resets itself and for up and down I set the acceleration limit to increase and decrease the reason I put it here is it's something you use quite often in flight especially if you're flying on a low gravity planet as we're going to learn later in another tutorial um, when you're flying a ship with really powerful thrusters compared to its size like the Gladius for example and you're flying on a moon with low gravity then you have a huge amount of problems to get thrust that's so small enough in, in changes that you can precisely move the ship how much you want. You will spend a lot of time accidentally giving it too much thrust. So what you can do then, if you lower the acceleration limiter limit, let's say to, for example, to 50%, then if you give thrusters 100% on your level, what actually happens is you only get 50% of the total thrust. And once you get some experience, you can um, tune it to each planet's gravity that you got used to. So if you fly a Gladius on a moon with almost no gravity, you can set it like to 20% out of 100% and comfortably um, get just the amount of thrust you need without having to fight it too much. <clears throat> okay, what do we have next? Okay, this is a really important one that's strafe up down. Strafe up down, we got on slider one. That's a really great feature on the Thrustmaster Hotus X. I'm not sure if other sticks have it too. It's basically it's, uh, on the back of your thruster lever, when you have your hand resting on it, you have three middle fingers. They rest on something that looks like it's like a long, long button that's called the tilting lever by the by Thrustmaster. It basically acts like a rudder. You can press it in one direction or the other direction, and it's like an axis. You can press it a certain amount as you want. You can hold it. When you let go of it, it just resets itself to zero. And that's one of the most important flight controls you're going to have in the game. And we mapped it to strafe up down, basically. Strafe up means you're telling your bottom thrusters to push your ship up, and strafe down means you push, you tell your top thrusters to push your ship down. What that means is, that's your hover mode, your helicopter mode, when you're flying close to the ground on a planet and you want to gently hover to a landing spot, for example. That's the main control you're going to use in um, when flying. Okay, what else is there? Okay, we got straight left, straight right. We got it on the coolie head, remember the coolie head from earlier? On left and right on the coolie head. Now the thing about strafing, if you learn to fly it like a helicopter in the atmosphere, you're rarely ever going to use strafe. That's why it's on the stick, but it's something usual. Not that often, you use it really rarely. 
but it's still somewhere in reach, but it's not the most important thing you're going to use. Because in most cases, when you're using Strafe, something went wrong in your approach on the la on a landing spot, for example, and you're trying to overcorrect, and Strafe is a really crude, crude way to do it. So you're going to rarely use it when you get some practice. Okay, next thing, what do we have? Throttle forward back. That's your main engine thruster, basically, your forward-backward thrust. That's on the z-axis, which is your lever axis. Now, when you map it, when you press double-click and you map this uh, throttle forward and back, when it asks you to move it, sometimes the game tends to flip it by accident forward and backward. I'm not sure why it's doing that. The way I got it set up is when I pull the lever towards me, back, I actually increase the forward thrust. And when I push it forward, it decreases it. That's my personal preference from flying flight simulators where I set up my, my thruster so it feels like more like helicopter collective. When you pull it towards you, it increases the collective. But that's up to you. That's your own preference if you feel it um, this way. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, afterburner, that's your booster. That's on button number seven. That's on again in your lever. Where your thumb is resting on your on your thrust lever buttons five six and seven are basically on your thumb and afterburner just like space break remember space break we mapped it so it fits in your index finger and where your thumb is naturally resting that's button seven the lowest one in in, in the row of those three and again afterburner is something you use often if you want to quickly fly somewhere or you want to carefully manage your thrust uh, sorry your thrust lever but you also want to give it some boost so you don't want to have to reach for something uncomfortable while you're doing it. That's why it's on button seven. Okay, then, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> so the next thing is landing system toggle. That's, um, it, the naming of that thing is kind of confusing. It, it, it just means that's your, your landing gear. It's not some auto land system, it's just your landing gear. Again, I got this on button eight. Um, on the lever on the Thrustmaster X, that's the lowest button on the front of the lever. It's, it's not too comfortable in reach for two reasons. First off, because you don't use it often. And secondly, you don't want it next to your, to your boost button by accidentally pressing that instead of boost, and just uh, putting out the landing gear for no reason. So you actually have to reach for it. You have to make the conscious decision to actually reach for that button. So you don't use it by accident. That's why it's a good thing to not have everything too easy in reach. Some things need to be like hidden away a bit. So you have to make the decision, okay, I'm gonna reach for that button that might cause something dangerous. Okay, what else do we have? Quantum travel system toggle and quantum drive. Again, that's like your B key on your keyboard for quantum travel. You map them both on button nine. It's the same thing. Basically, you press it once, you start the quantum spooling system, you hold it, then you can actually fly to the point. Now, here's the thing. When you map a button, the game allows you to map several functions onto the same button, which in some cases makes a lot of sense. Like for example, if you are having a ground vehicle, you're obviously using the same stick or not, sorry, the same, maybe you're using the same thrust level. Or when you're using mining in a ship, you have certain mining laser controls you might want to map on your trigger finger. And in that case, they don't conflict with each other because if you're mining in a mining ship, you will never shoot a laser while mining. So it's, it's okay for two buttons to use the same thing. However, you can accidentally map it so you can have two conflicting options mapped on the same stick, which might lead to weird results. Okay, and what I did here is I mapped it, button nine, and the game warns you if this button already has a function mapped on it. In this case, you just press OK, because it's supposed to be like that in this case. And don't worry, it doesn't actually delete the other mappings, which inversely means if you want one button to only do one specific thing, you have to delete all the other mappings for it. And you can do that by just pressing on it, like this, and you press right mouse, then you delete the entire mapping for it. Okay. <clears throat> Close movement, targeting. Now, this tutorial, or this, this mapping tutorial rather, is mostly for flight controls. The goal is to give you as much precise control over your machine to fly it exactly where you want it to fly, without, um, going too much into targeting or mining controls or not going to them at all because depending what ship you fly it might be radically different where you want your fire control your targeting buttons to be 
Like for example, if you got a Gladius, um, you would probably have a pretty conventional setup. Like you have a trigger finger for a laser, you have your thumb on the stick for, <clears throat> sorry, for locking missiles. Maybe you want the third button to actually shoot the missiles or you want the same button. Depends how you like it. <clears throat> However, if you're flying in a hammerhead as a pilot, you usually don't have any fire control systems because you only use the missiles. Then you wouldn't want to waste um, important buttons on your stick for something you don't even use because most of the gunnery is done by your turret gunners. So this is why this tutorial will uh, not go into targeting, not going to shooting and not going to mining. Just as a piece of information why everything is so empty in this place. Again, completely empty. I got here a lock selector target map to button two and unlock selector target to button two. That's just some basic targeting. Button two is basically on your stick. You press your thumb on the top, the central stick, the stripe one. Basically, it, it, it locks to whatever you got in your crosshair. It, it uses a lock target. That's really, really basic controls if you're almost any ship just wants to have a quick um, targeting system like that. Okay, let's look at target cycling. Again, it, this entire thing is empty because the whole targeting system is a topic on itself, which my, I might um, do a video about at some point later. This is why it's empty in this one. Target hailing, uh, at this point, not much use for it. Again, scanning gameplay. Not a part of basic flying, so I'm going to skip that. Mining, those are just default buttons. I haven't changed them. Because I currently use a mining ship, and again, efficient mining setup um, button settings is probably a topic on its own. Also, I, for turrets, again, default settings. Again, that's a topic for another video. Change that one, I think, too. No, it's the same. About missiles and defensive setup. Flare, chaff, these are all things that are, should be compacted into another video about using weapon control systems. And the only thing that's left in the control setup here is lights. Okay, headlights toggle is at button three. Button three is um, on, on the Thrustmaster X, if you hold your, your stick and you move your index finger from the trigger finger to the right up, then you feel like there's like a small, small triangular button that's button three i mapped it on headlights on this button because headlights is something you might use very often when flying in the dark you want to check a landing zone you want to have it in easy reach and that's the second most easy to reach button in the on the stick this concludes the mapping part of the tutorial in the next video we're going to talk about setting up your joystick curves